Okay, we all set? Good. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's Board of Ed meeting. The date is Tuesday, March 26, 2019. And I would appreciate if that everyone would turn off their cell phones as this meeting is being recorded. Ellen, can you please do our roll call? Yes, thank you. Good evening, everyone. Mr. Cassio? Present. Mrs. Evans? Here. Mrs. Fitzpatrick? Here. Mr. Healy? Here. Ms. McCurdy? Here. Mr. Morris? Mrs. Paradise? Here. Vice Chairperson, Mr. Hill? Here. Chairperson, Mrs. Granado? Present. And Weathersfield High School Student Representative, Ms. Eden Fritz Aguirre? All present. Tonight. Okay, the board invites a group from Salestine Middle School to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. So come on up right here. Thanks to all of you, and you're going to be coming up in a minute, because Michael, we have a that student is recognition. That is correct. Um, this evening, we have with right. us some of our outstanding students from Silas Dean Middle School, along with outstanding teacher, Mr. Eric Hennessy. So I could please have you come up to the podium. Tell us uh, what's going on at Silas Dean. Um, well, thanks for having us. Um, a couple years ago, many of you know I came and, and talked about how we are changing some of our elective courses at Silas Dean. Two years later, um, I, I'm very happy to say that things are progressing well. Um, and here are some of our superstar students that have excelled in the area of robotics and video production. Um, so what I'd like to kind of, um, I'm really excited about those. Those are kind of my two hot topics when it comes to courses. I think the kids are really getting involved, really getting engaged. And the nice thing is, the students are um, taking the learning on themselves. I'm more of a facilitator, which I prefer. I don't like being that teacher that's the sage on the stage and stand up there and just talk the whole class. I like to see kids engaged, learning, and, and, and learning on their own. You know, investigating, finding out, creating, um, all those great 21st century skills that we all need to have. Mm -hmm. um, this is the, you know, I, I believe our UA program that we've developed is a great tool for Silas Dean to help promote all of those 21st century skills that we're seeking. Um, what I'd like to do is start off with a video, um, one of our episodes from Access SDMS. Um, I am pleased to say that we did figure out a way that we're going to be able to find a little section on our website where we're going to be able to, you know, host all these videos so the public can see them. Um, right now it's more of an in-house thing, um, but we're going to try a bit, little bit better job next year of showcasing these um, and letting the public, the general public, see these videos, similar to what they're doing at the high school now with the Blue Eagle News and so forth. right now always with me in the room I, it's always <laughs> if i go out it'll work fine <laughs> jim sounds here to fix it put the board in the cheap seats Hello, and welcome to the first episode of Access SDMS in the second trimester. I'm Soti. And I'm Isabella. Today we will have three segments for you that affect the SDMS community, such as why did we not have Chromebooks last year, what we do this year. 
Another topic is one that will help students be more active. This topic is explaining why you should sign up for lacrosse. Another topic that will affect students more directly is what SDMS students think about the extra 15 minutes of school being added onto next year's school days. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. With the spring season fast approaching, you should consider signing up for lacrosse. Allie, Marianne, and Nicole are going to talk about the many benefits of joining the Weathersfield Youth Lacrosse team this season. So why should you play lacrosse? Lacrosse is not only fun to play, but it's also fun to watch. It's a very active sport and it is easy to get the hang of. This game is filled with all sorts of skills, throwing, catching, speed, stamina, etc. It's safer than you think, and it teaches lessons along the way, like collaboration, strategy, and teamwork. It's really fun to play with friends. As Liz said, it's a great way to play with friends, but it's also a great way to make new friends. And you could do that if you sign up for this upcoming season. What lessons lacrosse taught to me um, was uh, teamwork, working as a team. With a lot, of, There's a lot of different positions in lacrosse. And really learn a heritage of, of the sport. Like it's one of the only true all-American sports coming from the uh, Native Americans that were here. Um, so it was really cool to be part of that. So to actually be part of a sport where there's a lot of teamwork and you have big, a lot of history, as you guys know, I love history. Um, and so, yeah, it taught me a lot about myself and toughness and um, it was a lot of fun. And I always enjoyed it. All in all, lacrosse is a very beneficial sport in which kids from all different ages can learn teamwork and have fun with friends, all while getting great exercise. This is why you should consider joining the Weathersfield Youth Lacrosse Organization. Let's move on to our next topic. In January, the school board announced that they would be adding an extra 15 minutes of school to the school day. In this segment, Lizzie of Access SDMS asked what the staff and the students thought about this. First, I had the chance to interview the Orange Team math teacher about what she thought about the added 15 minutes. I think if used correctly, um, I, I do, I think it can be beneficial. I would like to see it maybe a combination instead of adding 15 minutes on the beginning or 15 minutes on the end. I would like to see it maybe split up so it wouldn't seem like such a long time. Next, I had the chance to interview a student on what they thought about the added 15 minutes. Due to the bus's late arrival to the school and the distance from my house to the bus stop, I normally don't get home until around 3.15. With the added 15 minutes of school, this will make after school activities hard to get to, being that I won't get home until around 3.30. Lastly, we got to interview the vice principal on what she thought about the added 15 minutes of school. So adding 15 minutes to the student day uh, will give us an opportunity to increase our instructional time, um, which allows teachers to get into more depth with the content that they're teaching their students. In the state, we're probably a little below average with how much time we have with our, our student time. Um, so this will give us an opportunity to really work on the skills necessary for students to become successful citizens and successful students. And there you have it. SDMS's opinion on the 15 extra minutes of school is rather mixed. Next, we will be looking at why students have Chromebooks this year and they didn't have it last year. Why didn't we have Chromebooks last year? We are now going to discuss the reasons why Chromebooks were not available to all students last year and why we received Chromebooks this year, as well as how they are useful for students at SDMS. Why are Chromebooks good for students? I think uh, Chromebooks are good for the student body because like they provide a tool for most students and like every class students will have the Chromebooks with them so that uh, the teachers don't have to bring carts out and like hand out Chromebooks to the students. The students already have that resource available so I think that's very good. Why didn't we have Chromebooks last year but we do this year? I think the idea of having Chromebooks started earlier than last year it just took the district a while to gather enough resources and Chromebooks and cases um, to make sure that all 7th through 12th graders would have a Chromebook. Why do you think computers are helpful for us this year? Computers are great for many reasons. Uh, one being that all the work can be uploaded electronically. So you can see all the sources and everything through your computer, have access to them 24 hours a day um, through Google Classroom. Um, I know for my classes, I use Google Classroom for everything and everything's uploaded on there, so if you're absent, you still have access to that information. As you can see, Chromebooks were not assigned last year because of a lack of funds required to purchase for all students. 
As you heard from Mrs. Cassio, this year the Board of Education had enough funds to supply all the students at SDMS with Chromebooks. In addition, Chromebooks are a helpful tool for students to use at home for completing their homework and a way to monitor the students' progress and those students who get off task. Thank you for all tuning in to the first show of Access SDMS. We hope you enjoyed all the different topics. I also hope that you found the stories interesting because they affect many aspects of SDMS. We'll, we'll see, see you on the next episode of Access SDMS. It's we're good. We don't need to watch the, the bloopers. It's they're funny, but um, <laughs> that's not the real reason for the. So what I'd like to do now is uh, bring up two students that were segment producers for that show right there. Did a great job for us. Not only um, with, I always tell students, you're, it's kind of like learning a new language when you, you start to learn how to tell a visual story. There's a lot of things that go into it. Um, it. Not only were they great writers, but they caught on really quickly on how to use the tools to tell a visual story, whether that was through uh, pre-production, production or post-production. Um, so I'd like to have them come up and talk to you because they're the real reasons we're here. Um, Allison Lesser and Nicole Partridge, come on up. All Unified Arts have an important have an importance to benefit our daily lives, our future lives, and the learning experience altogether. Silas Dean Middle School provides a wide variety of Unified Arts for students to take. In the second trimester, I had the opportunity to take Lights, Camera, Action, also known as a film class with Mr. Hennessy. This class has taught me technology on a deeper level. As a, as a society that greatly relies on technology, it is important to learn that aspect of our lives. This class is different from other classes in many ways, but in particular, it teaches something that will grow with our generation. Technology is a skill we will always use throughout our lives. In this class, we took stories that were important to us, our peers, or the school as a majority, and composed a storyboard to inform our classmates. We used cameras, microphones, computers, and more materials to help us learn the basics of film. An example of a story we did was, is it be beneficial to learn a second language? The takeaway from this class was that any story can be produced with the right equipment, team, and vision, and mindset. Um, what I liked about video production is like it's like always going to be able to help me with new project projects because like my brother who's in ninth grade, he had a project that he had to use iMovie in and I could help him with that because he didn't really know how to use it. And like this class helped me learn how to use iMovie and use a camera to like produce a story. And like it's going to, it's like different than other classes because mostly it's like just like general stuff like learning how to cook or like music and like health but this one like it was different because it taught me stuff that's like like Ali said like growing with the generation and we're gonna keep using it throughout our life. Great. Um, the next class I'd like to uh, talk about um, and I hate to label something that my favorite or whatever, but it's probably my most enjoyable to teach. Um, I enjoy teaching all my classes, but this year I really found a, a true passion. Um, I was new to robotics. I was a little appreh apprehensive at first to how we were going, to, how I was going to handle this, but I kind of fell in love with it. Um, and even thinking about taking, you know, getting another degree um, in robotics, my wife will probably, you know, kill me if I decide to do that, but that's all right. Um, but what I'd like to do is. Um, Bring up uh, Andrew Strong. Go bring the robot. This is uh, one of the robots um, that we the kids use. Um, it's the Vex IQ. Go put it on the ground. Just drive it around. Uh, Yana, there we go. Come on up. Why don't you put those things around? And what they do is the, the robot kits, we have 14 of these kits that the students can use. Um, go, Abigail, you want to put some of those blocks on so we can pick those up and so forth? Um, we have 14 kits that the students can use. Um, and what we do is the kids learn a little basic engineering, uh, mechanical advantage, gear ratio, uh, object manipulation. Um, and, and they go through a, several challenges where they build a sumo robot, they build a tug of war robot, um, a dragster robot. And all along, we're learning, learning a little bit of engineering. 
um, stuff they can apply to other fields too, um, if they wanted to go into something other than robotics. Um, and then we end the class with some programming, um, where the students actually learn how to program the robot to move autonomously. Um, one of the challenges is to start from my classroom, which is in the basement, um, and go all the way down to the Mac lab, which is quite a dis difference. There's about seven turns in there and so forth, and the kids have to program the robot to go down to the Mac lab, turn around, and come back to my room. Um, and, and it's kind of neat to see the kids take this challenge on um, and grow, because a lot of them come to the class with zero programming background and then leave um, really enjoying it and having a better understanding for it. And, you know, it, it's amazing to see, too, that the female students are usually the ones that had the least amount of experience with the program, and they end up being the better programmers by the end of the class. Um, I don't know what it is. Um, maybe the more detail-oriented or something, but it, it, it always just works out that way. Um, but what I'd like to do is turn it over to the three students that were kind of um, represented what we want in Silas Dean students. They did a great job in robotics this last trimester. Um, Andrew Strong, Yana Telenov, and Abigail Montes. So this evening, I'll be sharing my experiences in, in robotics class. In this class, I've been able to develop my skills in building, programming, and improving the structure of various robots. For example, we've engineered robots that have the ability to have greater strength than other robots and win against opponents in challenges, such as the tug-of-war challenge when we connected two student-built ro robots to each other to see which one would pull the other. Throughout this, we've learned concepts such as gear ratio, strength, power, and friction to improve the power of our robots. We've also learned to build robots that have more speed than other robots. Throughout these challenges, we have been able to, to build healthy competition among students, and we've been able to work together to create these robots, and it's really been like a learning process, I guess. In this class, I was able to stay engaged in the topics and look forward to the class on a daily basis. I would continue, continue to take this class in the future and would look forward to it. Robotics class introduces kids to engineering and programming using STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math, and can be a very important skill for kids in the future. Um, what I thought about robotics, it, it was really fun, uh, and it was really educational at the same time. and. Many of the challenges were fun because you could code and make your own robot. And that was fun for me because I've never really done this before and it was really a learning experience. And also, um, Mr. Hennessy taught it really well. And so <laughs> it, was, it was hard at some parts and easy in some parts, but it was a really fun experience. In the classes that I took for robotics, there were a lot of challenges, uh, such as the programming and the gear ratio. However, it was like really educational, and it taught me a lot about robotics. And there were also videos and writing essays that we even learned more about, about how you could program um, robots to move at your motion and how that would take um, time and patience with computer programming. Um, also, it was really fun and yeah. Okay, thank you. So there you can see some of our uh, star students at Silas Dean, um, excited the direction we're going with the Unified Arts program. Um, I, hopefully we continue to can grow. Um, our goal is, my goal next year for robotics is to have a, uh, hopefully a competitive robotics team um, that we could have next year. And hopefully as we grow, we can you know go into that um, and maybe start offering robotics or programming to the seventh grade students um, to try to get them excited and so forth. Um, and then our vision for Access SDMS is to have a little bit more regular show once the kids get used to it, maybe introducing the students in seventh grade to video production so they have that learning curve under their belt a little bit when they come to eighth grade and we can start producing the segments right away um, and hopefully enter them into some local um, 
video contests and see what we can drum up there and, and so forth. Um, the biggest thing, and um, a couple weeks ago we had professional development and I had an opportunity to meet with the high school staff. And it was nice, and you know, that vertical articulation, mm -hmm. where, you know. Um, and it was nice to, to kind of have that conversa conversation and see uh, that this program directly feeds into the robotics at the high school. Our video program directly feeds into the video production program at the high school. And it was, it was nice to have that conversation that continue, and I hope we continue to grow in that vertical alignment mm -hmm. with the curriculum and so forth. And, um, Thanks for allowing us to have classes like oh, this. Oh, yeah, thank you for thank coming. You. Thank you. Wait, wait, I, I think we may have some questions. Oh, Anybody sorry. have any questions up here? I just have a comment. Uh, great job. Keep it up. It's yeah. uh, a, a, a great field and interest for all of you to get in. And I bet you didn't even know you had that skill or talent to bring it to the table. But I, since I have some eighth graders in the room, you can put your talent to the essay contest for Memorial Day Parade. <laughs> and what Memorial Day means to you. And if you're selected, you could win $100, and it could go through all your help in making robotics. So there you go, one more challenge. The ultimate advertiser over there, huh? <laughs> <laughs> but I, I want to thank you, and I always appreciate when the students can get up there and talk. I, I, they just did a wonderful job, and you took away my line about how this is funneling right up through the high school. It's just like the farm league of our high school, which um, boys and girls, I'm thrilled that you're into this. I have one question though. What do you start with in robotics? What, you know, the first day, are you given like a, a box? So you have to put this together. I mean, this is how fundamental I am. This is the question I'm asking. You have to actually put it they together, come together to your. They have, and I should have brought a box in. I didn't, but they they have like a, it looks like a tackle box, um, and there's over 500 pieces, um, different varying size and motors and, and wires and so forth. And they start with inventory. I think it's important that they learn, hey, um, identifying the parts, inventorying, and, and understand that's your kit for the 60 days. You own that for 60 days. Take care of it and so forth. Um, but that yeah, they start baby steps and we and it's pretty amazing how fast they pick everything up um they're a lot smarter than i <laughs> guess we were and stuff when it comes to this stuff and they pick mm -hmm. it up it, it's easy and it's nice yeah. to sit back and just watch the learning go and and watch collaboration and stuff like that it's it, it's it's awesome that's wonderful great facilitator you are thank I, you thank you i try thank you, thank you for having oh, uh, just one other thing um just with regard to the articulation you talk about, interestingly enough, we just had the STEAM night at the elementary level um, just uh, this week. And for the Access SDMS, I need your help. Uh, I was approached by administration who was approached by team leaders talking about the fact that many of our students at Silas Dean are having a difficult time remembering their ID badges. So I really think, I know I've, I've got mine too, I was over at Silas Dean twice in the past two weeks and I was meeting with anywhere from 20 to 30 students each morning that did not have their IDs and ironically, not one of them forgot their cell phones. So I would appreciate it if Access SDMS could um, do a story on the importance of the ID badges because they're part of our safety protocol and very important toward keeping kids safe. So I, if you could help me with that, I'd greatly appreciate it. I will get right on it. I, I agree that is important. Thanks. Thank you. Don't forget Thank about you. the essay. Sody did something on the, on the Chromebooks, charging your Chromebooks, because that was another. Actually, yes, we did, I've, we did I've heard that too. Charging Chromebooks. So we will get on that. Though. We will thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Excellent you, students. Job, Parents, you. Thank, thank you as well. Okay. Next on tonight's agenda is the approval of our minutes for our regular Board of Ed meeting on March 12, 2019. Anybody see any corrections? Okay. May I have a motion to approve those minutes? So moved. A second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Abstain. Okay. Those minutes are approved. And also on tonight's agenda is the approval of the minutes for our special Board of Ed meeting on March 11, 2019. Uh, were there any corrections? Okay. May I have a motion to approve those minutes? So moved. Okay. A second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. I just have a comment. Um, 
on those minutes. I just want to thank Kevin. You did a great job taking those minutes that night, Kevin. Really thorough. Thank you. What I do. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, John. <laughs> okay, those minutes are approved. So now, is there anyone wishing to make a public comment? Come on up to the podium and state your name and address, and you have a five-minute limit. Okay, so we'll move on. Mr. Emmett, you have communications I tonight? I do. Thank you, Mrs. Granato. Good evening, everyone. Um, if you haven't heard already, the trains are returning <laughs> to Wethersfield. Uh, the district is preparing for the resumption of train service through Wethersfield at some point in April. Uh, as of this afternoon, there is not a set date on which service will start, nor is there a schedule of the time of day that the trains will come through. Um, we're currently in the process of conducting assemblies at our elementary and middle schools, and the Wethersfield High School community watched a presentation on train safety today. I've also notified our neighbors at Corpus Christi. Um, I will definitely be getting more information out as the schedule becomes clearer. I certainly want to give thank yous out to Wethersfield High School teachers Tom Brown and Andrea Haas for their assistance with developing our public service announcements. We have uh, train safety tips up on our website, um, and again, as we finish with the assemblies, it's important that parents do their part, talk with your kids, especially if you live um, near the railroad tracks. We actually had a concerned uh, citizen that sent video of several students uh, on the railroad tracks last week. We figured out who the students were. We had a conversation with them. It's important that we stay away from those tracks. So we'll continue to get the message out um, from our end. Tomorrow is SAT day. Um, again, maybe one of the reasons why Eden's not here with us this evening. She's getting ready. Uh, best of luck to our students participating in the test tomorrow. Uh, please make sure, students, that you're getting a good night's rest and be sure to have breakfast uh, before you focus in on that test. Mr. Moore sent out a school messenger today reminding students to come prepared and be sure to have identification. And Mr. Moore also noted that the school is offering free breakfast tomorrow prior to the start of the test window. I want to talk a little bit about the CMEA, the Connecticut Music Educators Association. They held the Northern Region Middle School Festival at Wethersfield High School on Friday and Saturday. I had the opportunity to attend on Friday evening, and the place was packed with very talented musicians. Um, from Wethersfield, representing Wethersfield, we had Bailey Cox from Silas Dean Middle School on sax for the band. In orchestra, we had Alyssa Cha, violin, Silas Dean Middle School. Kaylee Pettengill, violin, SDMS. Zachary Pia, viola, from Webb. Ava Leno, cello, from Hanmer. And in the NRMS choir, we had Sophia Barbara, from Emerson Williams. Alyssa uh, Pertikakis, from Emerson Williams, also in choir. Madeline Dakin, Emerson Williams, in choir. And finally, from Silas Dean Middle School, in choir, Caitlin Townsend and Madis Madison Roche. Our teachers involved in this event included our festival chair, Miss Katie Fortuna from Emerson Williams, Mike Bowles, our site host chair from Wethersfield High School, and our music teachers who all participated over the course of the weekend, Emily Caravella, Walter Cullop, Jacob Wojcik, Matt Burlow, Emily Fitch, Giselle Ziegler, and Kim Martin all came to help out. I'd also like to give a shout out to Chloe Bobrowski who assisted us as our nurse, um, taking care of medication, allergy needs, and student needs throughout the course of the weekend. So a very well attended event and certainly uh, puts Weathersfield <coughs> on the map is supporting music education. So we're in the process now with our anonymous alert app. We're in uh, the early stages of rolling this out to our students at the middle school and at the high school. We've done our training. Uh, we now have posters that are out at both the middle and the high school. We'll be utilizing advisory periods to notify our students about this particular app. This app actually came through the Wellness Committee. Um, we have both West Hartford and Newtown school districts that are using this, and it's an opportunity for students to anonymously report issues of bullying, issues of suicidal ideation, issues of threatening or any potential violence. It is anonymous and uh, myself, high school administration, middle school administration, and Mr. Karzar, our director of special services, all will receive notification when these alerts come in. And I thought it very important in my conversation with my colleague in West Hartford where they talked about the fact that it had a significant impact in that students that were in crisis 
could be identified by their peers, and then uh, they could provide the support that was needed for those students. So we look at this as another tool in supporting our students and making sure that our uh, culture and climate is safe and welcoming, both at the high school and the middle school. At the elementary level, with any type of bullying concerns, we still go through the process of writing it, sending it in, and our administrators will definitely respond to those concerns. I want to talk a little bit about phase two, where we're at. You haven't heard a lot about it. Well, they are doing a tremendous amount of work at this point in time with regard to uh, due diligence work as well as scenario planning. I did meet with the folks from both Mylone McBroom and Colliers last week and was extremely excited <laughs> over the potential here. <coughs> They're currently running test fits for buildings on current footprints as well as adjacent town land. They've also looked at other land in Weathersfield that offers necessary acreage for school construction, but not surprisingly, there are no other suitable spaces. So where we have them is pretty much where we need to stay. Uh, at this time, Malone will be working on completing the due diligence work, and Colliers is working on the costing out of the projects over the course of time. So I expect in the next three to four weeks, we should have completion and we should have various scenarios that we can start taking a look at and moving forward with our long range plan. So uh, speaking of long range plan, as you know, we had the phase one facilities assessment at Silas Dean Middle School. One of the issues that we were facing was uh, a major issue with the roof. I'm pleased to report that bids were open today here at Town Hall for the roof replacement over the auditorium. It's gotten to the point now where we've had too many repairs and it's just not working. And the space is really not feasible for use and we're worried that we're going to end up with damage to the ceiling and the seats in the interior. So. The town will be looking at replacing this uh, roof. Um, the uh, roof was also noted as a high priority need with that facilities assessment. So this is certainly justifiable in terms of replacing. And then last but not least with the High Crest Portable, uh, planning and zoning approved the portable design at last week's meeting. Uh, this project is expected to start soon uh, as the school year concludes in mid-June and we expect the space will be ready for the 2019 2020 school year. And looking ahead to the long range plan with regard to High Crest, we would look at High Crest being a swing space for future construction. So the need for these portables is there. Currently, we have instrumental music that is being provided in a closet, and we have a principal that essentially has absolutely zero space. Our occupational therapy is provided in a small conference room. So they are extraordinarily tight there. We're above capacity. So these are units that really need to be replaced. And with that, it's communications. Right. Thank you. Anyone have a question, Elaine? I, I just want clarification. Sure. On the high crest portables, are, what do you, do you, are you saying like through the end of June this year that old one will be removed? And yes. And then the new one will be in place by September for for a while. <laughs> that, that's, that's correct. Basically. So what we're okay, looking I'm at right now is <laughs> that we're in the process of design. So it's gone okay. through planning and zoning. Design has been yeah. approved. When school ends, uh, last day of school uh, is June 17th. So when school ends, we'll take High Crest offline. We won't have any summer programs there. Right. They will start with demolition of the old units. They'll okay. remove the old units. They'll take out all of the sonnet tubes and yeah. the footings. Okay. They'll replace those, and then they will crane in the units during the course of the summer. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else with a question or comment for Michael? Okay. Thank you. Okay, tonight we have two action items. Kelly, would you read action item 6A for us? Sure. Uh, move to approve the 2019 graduation date of June 14th, 2019. Okay, is there a second? Second. Oh, everyone liked that one. Any discussion on this? Michael. Yes, just want to clarify here. Our last day of school officially for the Weathersfield Public Schools is Monday, June 17th. However, the way our calendar is built, we build in 182 days. We have to have a state minimum of 180. Uh, seniors tomorrow will not be attending school because it's SAT day and they've already done their due diligence with the SAT. So that's one day. And then graduating on Friday, June 14th, we'll still give them the necessary 180 days. Um, at this point in time, we can set this date as of April 1st, looking at the weather. The weather's looking good for the rest of the week. We don't anticipate any issues. 
This will also allow us for our friends at Project Safe Grad that do a wonderful job of you know, making sure that our kids have a safe environment after graduation. They'll be able to do their planning and um, I've already talked to the town as well as the police department about this as well. So we'd be looking at graduation at the Cove, uh, 6 p.m. on Friday, June 14th. I just have a question. Sure. Um, for those that are watching and people that approached, uh, can you share with us, uh, I understand the 180 and the 182. Uh, questions came to me regarding why don't you just allow all students to be dismissed on that Friday. Would it be any cost savings to the town or would it be reversed? Would we lose funding uh, from the state? So if you could just clarify so that can be uh, Discussed. Yeah, we wouldn't lose funding from the state. We would have minimal savings with regard to transportation. That's a minimum day on Monday, the 17th, and then you have the contractual obligation as well. So what happens with the high school teachers on that last day of school on the 17th? They're still contractually obligated to come into work. You would end up having essentially sending everybody home and paying them to be home. So the idea of having the full 182 days for our elementary students is, uh, to me, is most feasible. You're not going to find significant cost savings there. And I think, um, John, actually last year, we, we did cost that out and we looked at it was maybe $10,000 total. Right. So, and then- I just think it's important for mm -hmm. people to hear what, what the rationale is. Mm -hmm. So. Can you do it that way, that way last year? I think that's what ended up it, it so recently. With, cor correct, for the graduation, we did. Yeah. We did. Now we just need guaranteed beautiful weather for June 14th. <laughs> we'll be all set. <laughs> True. Any other discussion? All right. We had a second. So all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Great. 6A passes. 6B, Elaine, would you read that for us? <coughs> the Board of Ed recommends approval of the cancellation of the April 9th 2019 regular Board of Education meeting. Okay, is there a second? Second. Okay, any discussion? Michael, you wanna to talk to that? Yeah, this uh, cancellation uh, um, is based on the fact that the Board of Ed meeting falls on a uh, vacation week. Mm -hmm. um, we've tried in the past to do board meetings over vacation weeks or on um, Veterans Day one year in the past and it was a struggle to get um, a quorum. In addition to the fact our staff student recognition is there on vacation, uh, wouldn't be here. Certainly if um, something comes up where we need to schedule a special meeting, we'll certainly do so, but um, given the fact that it's vacation week, um, it's prudent to cancel. Okay, anyone else? All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Good, 6B passes. All right, we're gonna talk about our Board of Ed meetings held. And John, you already telegraphed yours, the Memorial Day Parade Committee. Thank you so much. It is going to be on Saturday, May 25th, and the uh, March start is at the Motor Vehicle Department. If in clement weather, uh, we come to the high school. So at that point, I think we've been very lucky over the past several years that this weather's been good, yes. just like graduation, so we'll be there. The theme has been established, and that is honoring gold and blue star families. Um, our speaker has been selected, and uh, the major announcement will come at after our April meeting. We're very proud of that. Uh, we also have some additional singers at the cemetery with the service that's going on there. I think it's uh, uh, a change, an honor, um, and I think at the end of the day, there's been a lot of people working on it. With the staff here in Weathersfield, I wanna thank uh, Charlene Walsh and Sally Destoli for their input on the sixth grade poster uh, project as well as the eighth grade um, essay contest. So we've got a lot of involvement from the board and um, I look forward to a great day and being there. And if you're gonna march as a board member, just show up and let me know. Okay, any comments for John? Your committee does a lot of work for it, but it's worth it, it's a wonderful yeah. day. Okay, um, our other meeting, it was a student program and services, and John Morris is not here tonight, 
But that night we proposed, we saw, heard about the proposed elementary and secondary special education program to expand the ABA, the pre-K through four program to include grades five and six at the Webb Elementary School and to create RISE, which is Restore, Inspire, and Sustain, Educate at the Celestine Middle School grades seven and eight, and further conversations will be had on that. It was an excellent presentation. Thank you, John, and the group of teachers that was with you. Thank you. Um, we also have CREC Council. Ginger? Yes, uh, the CREC Council meeting was quite short um, last week. It was held on the same day as uh, the <coughs> Connecticut Association of Boards of Ed Day on the Hill. So the Day on the Hill happened up until about noon, uh, and then people came back for the CREC meeting, which was really only about half an hour. The only substantive thing that happened in that meeting was that we did pass um, part of their budget. They do it piecemeal. Um, the first part is administrators, professional, and support staff salaries and benefits, um, which was passed um, covering um, 803 employees um, with an increase of 2.4% in their um, salaries, uh, which compared to a blended increase of the um, correct teachers of approximately 3.3%. And that's it for CREC. Thank you. Any questions for Ginger? Okay, we'll move on to our Finance and Information Committee, which we just left. Kevin. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, we met earlier this evening. Um, similar to last month, uh, we're working on a about 20,000 under budget for the 2019 uh, uh, budget year. It's the same cost drivers uh, that we've seen the past few months regarding the Hanmer Nurse and mid-year outplacements for special ed. Uh, the business office continues to work with Eversource on a resolution to our electricity issue at the high school. Mm -hmm. And we had a brief discussion regarding the expansion of the ABA program and the RISE program um, that we talked about in student programs and services and how, uh, how potentially should those expansions move forward, how we would um, place them in our budget. Great, thank you. Any questions for Kevin? Okay, meetings that we have scheduled. John will be doing another Memorial Day Parade Committee meeting um, on the 10th of April. And we have our WEC Council, which is on the 15th at 4.30, Student Program and Services on the 16th at 6.30, the CREC Council again on the 17th at 11.30 a.m., and Finance and Information will be on the 23rd at 6.15. Okay, is there any unfinished business? John. Can we add one more meeting to that schedule? Sure. Uh, we have a facilities and maintenance committee meeting on April 1st. That's right. At 6 p.m. Did that get decided that it was April 1st? Because we kept getting, okay. At 6? At 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. Okay, anyone else? Okay, and any unfinished business? Okay, we'll move along to public comment. Is there anyone wishing to make a public comment? Please come on up to the podium, state your name and address, and may I remind you that we have a five minute limit. Okay, any board comments? John? Um, yep, yeah, it's uh, that time of the year. The spring is around us, and uh, a lot of uh, traffic. So I just caution uh, not only the train, but it seems as if the, um, the riding, the driving, and uh, um, is getting a little careless. So along with not only adults, but with uh, young drivers, um, several little fender benders along Wells Road. Um, and you know, I just think we have to be cautious and aware of the weather change and there's still sand on the road. So having said that, I'll go to another topic, and that is <laughs> the uh, Mayor's Charity Ball is going to be taking place on Friday, June 7th at the Weathersfield Country Club. It's the 7th. The I, I said it was the 1st, it's the 7th, okay. Seventh, June 7th at the Weathersfield Country Club. Um, tickets are $85 per person, and the sale of tickets go on April 15th. 
the cause and the funding for this is uh, Action, Action Hunger Committee. Last year they raised over $30,000 uh, that went to social use services in which uh, they were all uh, able to uh, do the preschool program, the backpack program for uh, many uh, preschool children in Wethersfield, as well as giving healthy meals to over 85 seniors in Wethersfield. So it's a vital program, it's a vital fundraiser, um, and everyone's welcome to attend. Um, we usually get two Board of Education tables, and uh, you're welcome to let me know if you'd like to be on that table, Lady in Yellow. And uh, It's a great evening, it is. You are. Um, welcome to join us. It's a great evening, a uh, lot going on. Thank you. Thank you, John. Anyone else for comments? I, I have a few here. Um, on Thursday, March 21st, the Kenine Kids Coalition met, and I always want to comment on them. Um, it's a great example of collaboration among different groups in town working for our kids. The agenda started, and I always love saying the current number for the after school program, there's approximately 1,003 students enrolled, which is about a third of our elementary population. Caroline Fazina, who is the coordinator of the program, will be looking into what obstacles children might have for not being able to attend any of the after school programs. Some exciting events for the spring and mark your calendars, our theater performances in the elementary school. On April 26th and 27th, the Webb School will be presenting Cinderella. High Crest Thespians will be performing The Lion King on May 2nd, and Charles Wright will be performing Annie on May 4th and 5th. Keen for Kids is also looking to include coding, especially for our girls in next year's program. The Chess Club has a tournament coming up on April 13th. Please check the website for information. It's a great game of strategic thinking that our students are proving to be quite skilled at. Celestine Middle School um, also has after school programs sponsored by Keenan Kids. The intramural sports program fills up quickly as well as tutoring. They continue to search for ways to get even more students involved. And the library was there, presented by Brooke Berry, who reported on the teen after-school program. She, too, is always searching for ways to get more of the students involved. Brooke also announced that the book sale is put on by the Friends of the Library, and it's the last week in April. And this is a great way to get a lot of books into your home um, and for your students at school for a less expensive way. Park and Rec has a summer brochure out. I'm thrilled to hear that word, summer, too. And online, and soon to be in the rear reminder, and the board, administration, and staff, again, says thank you for all that Keenan Kids does for our students. Um, we get our Friday updates, which are fabulous. It's the way the board can connect with what's going on in the schools. And I happen to spot this one on Arts Extravaganza which is tomorrow night, um, 6 to 8 at the high school. And I have to say, I have gone to these in the past, and they're just outstanding. Um, the Career Advisory Board met last night. Michael Emmett was there, myself, Diane Fitzpatrick, John Morris was there. Um, a great group of volunteers from the town who are in the business world. A lot of talk last night about manufacturing connections. Um, there is a health care connection that we're hoping will start um, with our students attending that in the fall. But I'd like to close tonight with a few words about something that I know is troubling all of us. And it was the recent news regarding the college admission scandal and how ironic that our students are taking the SATs tomorrow. I think it's worth saying that this board, our administrators, principals, and teachers are all working to guide our students as they search for their particular place in the world and their future success. That may include a college career in an Ivy League school or a state university or college, a junior college, a tech school, or even the military. The truth is, there is no single path to future success. There are many. So we applaud all those students and their families who have worked so hard to prepare for the next step in their life, whatever that might be. 
This is the time when they will find and become who they are. What got them to this point is the great American philosophy that we've had since Thomas Jefferson, that education is the even playing field. And that's why this admission scandal is so ugly, hurtful, and unacceptable. So I say again, we applaud all the students and the families who have worked so hard to prepare for the next step in their life, whatever that might be. And so we don't have Eden tonight to tell us about life at the high school because she's hopefully preparing for her SATs tomorrow. Um, any other comments? And then do I have a motion to adjourn this meeting? So moved. A second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you all and good night.